so hello all good afternoon good morning or good evening in whichever time zone you are uh, i would be the first speaker my name is asim wangu and i would be the first person to ruin your saturday so please bear with me so without further ado let's jump on to the topic dart and cli come on the interface so know me uh, i am currently employed at livemore i am senior software engineer at livemore which is a personal development app i also created this website flatter with flutter i am a writer at flutter community medium flutter community uh, i youtube i create youtube small small youtube videos and blog also about livemore so this is basically a personal development app in this app you have free access to content you can ask questions to experts for free so you can have even live sessions with those experts and you there are some key courses catered for personal development use cases for specific to users you can avail those also and finally yes it is with with flutter so now uh, just let's deep dive into the topic and before we deep dive let me give you an introduction to that uh, just a brief introduction so what is that it is basically an open source programming language it was released or i can i should say the first stable release of this language was in 2011 and it is developed by google so let's see where to use that Uh, that can be used in mobiles can be used on desktops can be used in server frameworks and can be used now in web on the right hand side you can see a small it uh, is a flow chart or a diagram which say, shows different how we can use different dart vms in production as well as development so on the dark blue side it's the development tool chain given supported by dart so it's a different compiled version for dart which we use in our development purpose and once we choose to go to production we choose to go with a different runtime which is compatible or suitable for production use cases now let's see one by one how is dart used in these four use cases so using dart in mobiles so dart is used in mobiles using flutter which is a ui framework for creating cross platform apps second dart in desktop so dart is used in desktop using flutter desktop third web so we have frameworks dedicated or built in dart called let's say angular dart or flutter for web and finally we have server frameworks and for example aqueduct which is made in dart and this is an example of a pro, uh, it's example of a dart program which is running on android ios web mac and chrome the key, this is basically a game called as kenkin so this is running on chrome now now this is the android so this is the ios web mac and finally chrome now let's see what does a simple dart program look like so every dart program enters using a main function as you can see on the right hand side so this is this file is called as main.dart and let's say you want to run this program you will simply call this dart run and the name of your file which is main.dart in our case the output of this main.dart or this program is hello singapore as we have specified in the print statement now now as as we saw how what does a simple dart program look like let's see how we can use dart to make a command line interface so making cli how we can achieve this using dart to native so what dart to native does it compiles the dart program to native machine code so for example if you want your hello world or your hello singapore application program to run on your desktop os 
you will just use this dot to native command to make it executable. As we say previously, the output is an executable. And yes, it is supported on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Let's talk about dot to native now. And firstly, let's give an overview of dot to native. So a long time, Dart has supported AOT compilation, but that was only exposed for iOS and Android. So on the right hand side, as you can see, one of the previous slides had this diagram. So there are different, uh, so Dart uses a different compiler for development and a different compiler for production use cases. So this was already available a long time, but this Come, uh, this functionality was exposed only for iOS and Android. Hence, uh, Flutter, when it came out initially, was focused heavily on iOS and Android. But now, with the use of Dart to native, uh, Dart framework has extended its compilation support for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. So, what is Dart to native? Before we see what's Dart to native, so this is an announcement which was, this is basically a command line interface, which was created by Dart team to announce this feature Dart to native. So the create command line interface is run by dot slash announce, and this is entirely programmed in Dart. So what is Dart to native? It's an extension of Dart compiler. Second, what it does, it compiles your Dart programs, hello world or from starting from a simple hello world to a very complex to self-contained executables. And thirdly, it yes, it is compatible with Dart FFI, which is called as foreign function interface. Let's see a bit about what is this third point compatible with Dart FFI means. So basically all your native functionality or all your operating systems were created are using the libraries which are written in C. So all the core system libraries of any operating system are in C. And let's say your application, let's say in our case, that has to access these native functionality from operating systems, which is currently, which is C library. So with using that to native, we can access system libraries since the feature of FFI is supported by that to native. So Using FFI, you can talk with C libraries, you can send the response or you can get the response from these system libraries and you can use the output or whatever depends on your use case using that to native in your command line interfaces. So now let's see how we can create an executable using that to native. For creating executable, First, we need to specify a source file, which is main.dat in our case, on the, displayed on the top picture. Secondly, once we have finalized our program, we want to create an executable now. What we do is we use dat to native. The command used for creating a source program to an executable is this, dat to native space source file space dash o, which stands for output and space executable name. So our source file is main.dat and the executable name, which we say is hello in our case. So the final step, the executable which is generated is named as hello. So this was the process for creating our simple hello world or hello Singapore to an executable running. Um, so now let's, if we talk about the comparison between Dart VM and Dart to native, so there is an open issue addressed by people doing this feature or people using this feature that Dart native is somewhat slower than Dart VM. So link of this issue is mentioned in the slide description. Um, so Dart, Dart VM, what it does, it uses GIT or just-in-time compiler, which is good for development purposes and, but it has slow startups, but guarantees for good performance suited for development purposes. Whereas on the other hand, Dart to native, it can be used to create, it is uses AOT compilation, which is 
recommended for production use cases. It has fast startup, but has consistent runtime performance. So this issue is currently active. And people, yes, people are actively trying to make this comparison even less, uh, which less seeable. So let's see now how we can create, how using that to native, how we can create uh, our own CLI, which is called crypto in our case. So let's give an uh, introduction about crypto. So this is a command line interface made with that to native. What it does, it fetches Bitcoin price from Coindesk API. And what's the output of this? We show the price of Bitcoin in USD, Euro, and GBP. This is an overview or how this command line interface looks like. So our, we have exposed the command called as BDC. And on the right hand side picture, you can see uh, we the our CLI shows us, hey, these are the available commands. Hey, this is the info for the CLI and some options like help or usage. Now, let's say if the user types in the command correctly, command which is BTC in our case. So we the user types in BTC correct command, we process the command and we fetch the API price from the API and show it to the user. And as we said, the BTC price is shown in USD, Euro, and Pound. Let's say our user, our dear user, doesn't type in the correct command. So we need to cater for those use cases also. So we catch these cases and we give a description that, hey, uh, we couldn't find a command called as XYZ or whatever the user would have typed. Uh, and we show, show the user error specified that, and also we say that, hey, by, by the way, the available commands are BDC. So how was this crypto CLI prepared or what's the recipe of this crypto CLI? So this uses two packages. First is HTTP package. This package is used for calling API for getting Bitcoin prices. And second is the args package. Uh, this was used to define our command BTC. And these two packages are available on pub.dev. So let's see different steps to create our crypto. So currently there are four steps. Let's see one by one. So first step is we create our command. Uh, we have an abstract class called as base CLI command. Basically, we have just, it just includes that, hey, you need to specify a name of the command, you need to specify description, and we have written a method which would need to be overwritten if someone or someone extends this abstract class. So our crypto command is a class which extends this abstract class. So uh, by right, we need to define our own command, which we say BTC in our case. Uh, we give it the description that let's say, hey, it shows the price of Bitcoin and we overwrite the run method. And in this run method, here is the crypto API call. Basically this in fetch data function calls in the HTTP, sends the HTTP request to the Coindesk API and gets back the data. Second step. So we need to, we need to define our command now. So we define command using command runner. So this comes from a package args and we specify this requires two parameters. So first is the executable name and second is the description. So in the description we say that, hey, uh, just whenever the, the CLI runs, just show the user that this is the info for this command. And now the third step would be to register this command so that our CLI would not recognize this. So third step, register and run. So we register our crypto command using runner, which comes from the command runner package. And now using this, we register that, hey, our CLI will respond to this command, which is the crypto command. And crypto command includes the command BTC. Finally, we run this uh, we register and run this command. 
And let's say for use cases where the user doesn't type the correct command, we need to cater for those also. So for that, we use, we first print out the error and finally we exit our CLI using exit code. So this exit code comes from that IO package. And exit code one means terminate the application. Finally, we generate our executable. So this is done again using that to native, where as we had shown in previous slides, we have to specify our source file. We have to specify our executable name. So in our case, our source file is crypto dot dot, and the executable name, what we say is crypto. So when we run this command, dot to native crypto dot dot minus o crypto, we get an executable crypto. So let's see the demo in action. So this is our application crypto. Let me make it bigger. So this, when I run the CLI, it shows me what are the available commands. I know now, hey, okay, BTC is the command which is available in the CLI. Uh, and some info about this CLI, which says, hey, know the price of BTC. Now, as we try to be a good citizen and we do what this command line interface has exposed, we type in the correct command, which is BDC. And it gives us the price of Bitcoin in USD, Euro, Pound, along with the timestamp what when it was called. But now let's say we try to not, to not to be a good citizen and we just type anything. So it says, hey, uh, we couldn't find a command called XYZ. And now also let's try to add a new command. So for that, uh, I have this hello command. We will add this command. So what's this hello command look like? So this contains a description that say hello. And what is the name of this command, which is hello. So now let's recompile our CLI so that this hello command is registered. We use that to native crypto than that, which is our entry file and the output we specify is crypto. So this generates our CLI with the new command. Okay. So now our CLI generated is crypto. Now try, let's simply try running this CLI and it should show us the available commands as hello and BTC. And yes, it does here. So we can see the new command added is hello and the description is say hello. So now let's try to enter this command. So it shows us hello folks. And we have basically, we have already done the run method in this hello command to print us hello folks. And just to make sure that we didn't break, break the previous command, we will again type pdc and it still works. It gives us the price. And yeah, so moving back to our slides. So now what is the execution time for crypto? So that can be achieved using time. So time is a command. So we say time and our CLI, which is crypto in our case. So after running this, we see that this crypto CLI exits in about 79 milliseconds. And for, let's say in the demo, we try to see how much time it takes. So yeah, it takes still 77 seconds, no, uh, milliseconds. Let's switch back to the slide again. And so the other options available in dot to native are minus H, which is used to display help for all options, and minus K, which we K 
can use to specify our output type, whether it is AOT or EXE. By the way, it defaults to EXE, which if we haven't specified minus KR. And finally, minus O or rash O, which is used to specify the output. And if we don't specify the path, it assumes that you want your CLI to be created in the directory in which it's running. So in our case, crypto was generated in the same folder or in the, yeah, in the same hierarchy where this entry file was. And yes, there are some other options also available in .dot .native. Dot .native. So what lies ahead? We can use that in Cloud Run. You can containerize applications using that and deploy on Google Cloud Run. You can also write Cloud Functions using that now. So this is available using Functions Framework. So this is a package also available in pub.dev. On the right-hand side, you can see how we can use that to create a Cloud Function. So using this Functions Framework is imported, and the person types in that, hey, OK, uh, if a request is sent, you would respond, hello world. And the output of this function is a hello world once if you try to curl the HTTP generated after this func cloud function is deployed somewhere or if it's running local. Um, so what are the limitations of that native? Yes, there are some. So first is no cross compilation support. What this means is you need to compile separately if you want your CLI to create it, to be created on Windows or Mac OS or Linux. This is one of the limitations. Second one is there is no signing support available for the CLI executables, which are generated using that native. So basically, the executables created using that native are currently not compatible with standard signing tools like as code sign or sign tools. And thirdly, currently there is no support for that developer. What this means is we cannot debug our application or CLI application using debugger or inspector. These things which are already available in the Flutter framework for iOS and Android. And yes, uh, currently there is no support for that to mirrors also in that to native, uh, which is primarily used for reflection. The source code for this application is here. The crypto CLI itself is here in, in this link. And uh, there is a video for that and CLI, which is created by me. It's hosted here. Uh, my website is here. My Flutter website is here. And yeah, uh, that's all, folks. And yes, the floor is open for questions now. Yeah, uh, thanks, Asim. Uh, I think we have uh, a few questions. Uh, let's start with the first one from Arto. Are there any pre-built libraries for native desktop integrations? Uh, or uh, they need to be uh, created manually? So currently, there are some libraries written in C. Those can be written or can be used using FFI, because currently that native supports this FFI. Uh, so at the moment, I would say, uh, depends on your use case for uh, like notification control. Yes, uh, you need to write a C bridge for now. But uh, assume that since that is growing very popular, so maybe one day you get up and see your library already made by someone else. But for now, yes, you have to write using C bridge. Uh, does this executable file can be run in multiple OSs? Uh, do we need to recompile the code uh, for specific platform? Um, so currently, this is a limitation of that to native. Uh, if you want to run your executable on different OS, you need to compile it on different OS. So yeah, that's it. That's the status for now. 